common scene all over Singapore throughout most of 1963. The Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, was visiting the constituencies, 51 of them in all. The visits first began on the 24th of November, 1962, in rural Jurong. This was a difficult place to start. 50% of the voters in Jurong had earlier cast protest votes in the referendum for merger with Malaya. The Prime Minister visited them to make them understand that the merger was vital to Singapore's survival and to draw them closer to the government. Next, on the 15th of December, it was Thompson, another rural constituency. From then on, the tours gained momentum. From the rural to the urban, constituency after constituency, they increased from once in two weeks to five times a week. The people turned out in large numbers to see the Prime Minister. People heard so much about him. And of course, the uh, majority of the rural people, they came out to meet the men who promised them so much in the new government. And some came out out of curiosity, some just want to know what he looks like, and uh, some just want to have the pleasure of speaking to him. The personal contact was very important at a time when the population was largely illiterate, and most people could not afford the luxury of television. Living conditions were poor, and many were struggling just to make ends meet. Housing and unemployment were the problems of the day. The Prime Minister listened to the people, their complaints and their views, demonstrating that the government was a caring one, willing to learn about their difficulties and lend a helping hand. In turn, they listened to him. The tours provided a very good platform from which government policies relating to specific localities could be explained directly to the people. This is about the most expensive standpipe in Singapore, for we spent $36,000 to put the standpipe up. And I want to make clear why we did it, because there's bound to be a lot of other kampongs who say that they also should have a $36,000 standpipe. Because in this case, having laid on this standpipe, we were at the same time able to hive off five other standpipes to serve five other areas. In other words, although it was $36,000 for this one, five other places also got the benefit. At various places, Mr. Lee stopped to open community centres and schools. He also heard petitions on issues that related directly to the immediate needs of the people. Street lights, standpipes and even drinking water. All these were taken note of. At the time there, it was just uh, those, those old-fashioned street lights with a little tiny bulb on a pole. Now, slowly, they were changed to fluorescent tubes. And in the kampongs where street lights or uh, pathway lights were not provided, uh, they allowed private contractors to come in and charge residents a small fee for lighting up the roads. Now, these uh, brought more life to the kampong at night. Haji Mohammed, who lived on Pulau Sudong, recalls how he and his neighbours had to brave rough waves to go to the neighbouring islands for their water supply. This difficulty was brought up during the Prime Minister's visit and they saw some results. Problems and difficulties were quickly resolved. But a young nation could not take economic growth, stability and security for granted. So while the Prime Minister dealt with issues at the personal level, he also wanted the people to focus their attention on wider issues. 
I come to Nee soon to look after the small things, drains, roads, electric lights, water pipes, and so on. But the small things depends on the big things, merger, stability, security, economic development. If we've got that, then we've got prosperity, then the taxes will pay for the roads, the lights, the community centers, the clinics, the people's welfare. The crowds listened as he spoke in their own language, showing his sincerity and earnestness. But there were those who opposed the Prime Minister and his policies. In one instance, he was pushed and almost fell into a monsoon drain. But all these did not deter the Prime Minister. He persevered on, and with a dedicated group of community leaders, he completed the tours down to the last constituency. These community leaders were steadfast in their mission. They accompanied the Prime Minister on his visits, many of which started early in the morning and lasted all day long. In Bukit Panjang, for example, the tour took 10 hours, covering some 14 villages. The longest of the tours was at Sembawang. It lasted 18 hours and ended only at 3 a.m. The last tour was at Mountbatten and it ended only at 6.15 in the morning of September the 12th, 1963. A few hours after that, the Prime Minister was at the nomination centre to formalise his candidacy in the 1963 general election in which the PAP won 37 of the 51 seats. Uh, it is a breakthrough between the people and the government and those who are elected to govern because uh, they see for the first time that the government is taking an interest coming down to visit them and find out their problems the important thing is that a few months after the PMB improvements were seen visibly seen there were more street lights the roads were uh, uh, surfaced and there were improvements and these little, little improvements helped to build up confidence in the new party at the time. A valuable experience drawn from the past, which the leaders today have benefited from. Hence their own series of walkabouts, beginning in October 1983. The masses can now follow the proceedings of parliament on television and read about government policies in newspapers. But there's still nothing quite like the personal touch when it comes to winning the hearts and minds of the people.